my name is Marika Hirase, and I'm a staff attorney at the New York Civil Liberties Union. Um, so the New York Civil Liberties Union is an organization that is dedicated to advocacy and to litigation to protect the rights of all New Yorkers under the state and federal constitutions. Uh, and we're an affiliate of the American Civil Liberties Union. Uh, so before I start, uh, I just want to, I don't want to forget this. I brought um, a bunch of uh, brochures and handouts that we have from the New York Civil Liberties Union. Some of them are about privacy, some of them are about other students' rights issues. So um, afterwards, feel free to come up and take whatever you want. Uh, and there's also a flyer for freedom of expression contest that we're doing. Um, so we are looking for submissions of essays, poems, and any other writing. Um, and that deadline is in May. So I hope uh, you're interested and that you take one. Um, so I'm here today to talk about privacy. And I'm very excited to learn that you've all been talking about this issue and thinking about this issue because we think this is a very important right for us to be protecting. Um, and there are three points that I want to address today about privacy. The first point is, why is privacy an important right for all people? And the second is, yeah, do you want to? Oh, no, no, it's Okay, <laughs> all right, yeah, I think that might make more sense. So we can just wait. Um, I won't talk too, too long, so you can ask questions and we can do the discussion afterwards. Um, the second issue that I want to talk about is why is it important to think about privacy now um, and to talk about the interaction between new technologies and privacy. Um, and the third point that I will uh, address is what is a solution? What, um, what should we, what kind of protection should we be seeking? Okay, so on the first point, why is privacy an important right for all people? Um, one of the first reactions that I get when I talk about this topic um, is people saying, well, I have nothing to hide. You know, I'm not doing anything wrong, so I don't need privacy. Um, but that's actually not quite right. Everybody needs some amount of privacy at some point. So I'm going to start with a very easy example, um, personally identifiable information, right? Like your security number, your social security number, your telephone number, your physical address. You don't want that out there for everybody to see because then people can steal your identity, they can stalk you, they can stay, spam your email account. So we need some amount of privacy in order to deter unwanted behavior. Another example of why we all need privacy is the same reason that we have closed doors, right? So we close our doors to go to the bathroom, to change, maybe to practice a dance routine. Um, and we would be outraged if there was a secret camera in the bathroom stall or in a changing area. And there are just some things that we, that are part of our daily routines. It's not bad, it's nothing criminal, but we need privacy for those activities. Um, another example is communications. So what we say to our best friends is not the same as what we say to our teachers or to potential employers or to total strangers. And it really shouldn't be, and there is nothing wrong with that. So for example, you might need some confidentiality in communications because you have an extra ticket for the movies on Friday night, and you want to give it to one friend, but you don't want everybody to know that you gave it to that one friend. Um, or you're planning a surprise birthday party for your best friend, and obviously you don't want that friend to know until the day of the party that you've been planning with. So we all need some confidentiality in our communications. Um, and all these reasons and more are reasons why privacy has always been a very important right. And this has always been the case, uh, even from back in the time when this country was founded. Um, so if you think about the time when the Constitution was being drafted, things were very different back then. But even back then, they had closed doors. They had the concept of, of secrets and keeping secrets, um, and they had diaries, which were not meant for everybody to see. Um, and that's why the founders of this country decided that they need to incorporate the right to privacy in the Constitution. And they did this most explicitly in the Fourth Amendment, in the Bill of Rights, um, which gives people um, the right to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. Um, so that, that's the uh, amendment in the Bill of Rights that most explicitly gives you your right to privacy. Okay, so 
right to privacy is an ancient right. Why do we need to be talking about it now? Well, it's because advances in technology have really changed our, our interact, our privacy rights. Um, and they've threatened privacy in unimaginable ways. So I'm gonna talk about a few ways um, in which the world is different between what I'll call our pre-technology world and post-technology world. Okay, so one thing um, is that technology now allows storage of vast amounts of information in little pieces of property. So if you think about your cell phones, right, it's, it's a very small thing, but it contains a lot of information. Um, so if someone were to look at the cell phone, they can look at your contact list, find out who all your friends are, um, who you've talked to the most in the past week, how long you've talked to them. And depending on the phone, it can figure out what music you've been listening to or what photos you've been taking, where you've been, what emails and texts you've sent. Um, and then laptops and computers are, are magnitudes greater than that. So if someone were to look through my, my laptop, they could really tell everything about me, right? Like not just my communications, but health information, tax documents, everything is on my laptop. Um, and all work-related things as well. So why, how does that have a consequence in our privacy rights? Um, well, before this kind of technology arrived, we didn't have one piece of property that could hold as much information and reveal as much detail of our, about our lives. So if we think about uh, searches at the border, right? for a long time, customs officials would search bags of people coming across the border, and they would just do this as a routine matter. Um, and it, it was an invasion of privacy. If someone looks through your bag, they can see what um, medicine you might have with you, what books you're reading at the time. Um, so that's an invasion of privacy, but it's nothing comparable to someone looking through a laptop to see if there is something illegal in there. Um, so one question is, you know, there are things that the government had done before, like look through, board, look through bags when people cross the border. But how should we think about our privacy rights in this new post-technology world? Does that mean that customs officials should have the right to look through your laptop as well when you're crossing the border? Uh, and, and we think not. Um, Another difference between the pre-technology world and post-technology post world um, is that third parties now hold a lot of our information. So what I mean is, for example, emails um, are not only communicated through services like Gmail and Hotmail, and I don't know what else is out there nowadays, um, but that they are stored by them. And then Amazon holds all your shopping records, and then Facebook has all your information about who your friends are, um, other communications, what you like. All that information is in the hands of third parties. Um, and if you think about it, that's very different from our pre-technology world, where maybe you would send a piece of mail by through the US Postal Service. Uh, but of course the Postal Service didn't look inside and they didn't keep a copy of what you sent for their records. Or if you went shopping to your local store, they didn't keep a record of all the things you bought. And they certainly didn't cross-reference it with other stores to see what you've been buying on all the days of the week and what you like to buy. Um, so the question there is, can we trust these third-party services with all of our information? What are they doing with all this information and what protection should we have? Um, and finally, the last difference that I want to point out between uh, pre-technology and post-technology is the low cost of surveillance. Um, so what I mean by that is that uh, back in the old days, if the police wanted to follow you around, they had to assign one officer and probably many more um, to follow you around for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it would probably be very difficult to do and pretty ineffective. Um, and that meant that they had to have a pretty good reason why they were doing it. They couldn't just decide to follow anybody around. They had to justify why they were following somebody around. 
Well, now we have GPS surveillance, and it's fairly easy for law enforcement to just install a GPS device on someone's car and have that person followed around for as long as a month or two months or three months. Um, so, for example, we have a case right now in New York courts where the New York State actually put a GPS device on its employee's car um, just to investigate employee misconduct, sus suspected employee misconduct. So the state basically thought that this guy was not where he said he was going to be during the course of his employment. Uh, and they just attached a GPS, car to his, GPS device to his car and followed him around for a month. And that, to me, illustrates the dangers of low-cost technology. It's so easy to do, but there's very little obstacle for the government to do it. Um, and now they can follow anybody around if they wanted to. And the problem with the differences, these differences between the pre-technology world and post-technology world, um, is that laws haven't quite caught up. Um, so the federal statutory law that we are relying on right now for our privacy protection is called the Electronic Communications Protections Act of 1986. Now, 1986 is a long time ago. I'm guessing that most, most of you here weren't born back then. Um, and yeah, I was, I was born, I was here, uh, but it was very different. We didn't have cell phones for the most part. People didn't really have laptops. We didn't use email in the way we do now. Um, and so you can see how outdated that law can become. Um, and although the Fourth uh, Amendment of the Constitution um, should be read flexibly enough to accommodate this, these technological changes, um, it takes a long time for, court, for cases to make their way through the court system. So we're just now starting to get some answers about how protected we are in this new technology. In this world of new technology. Um, and now I just want to close by talking a little bit about solutions and what I'm, what we're hoping for in this new world of technology. Um, and, and what I'm proposing is not that we throw away our, our cell phones or laptops or stop using Facebook. You know, I like those services as much as you do, I'm sure. Uh, and, and I think we should take advantage of them. What I'm proposing is just some limitations. So for private companies, there should be some limits to what they can do, um, some requirements as to what they have to tell us they're doing, um, and choice for us as consumers uh, in terms of what we want to share with other people and what we want to keep to ourselves. Um, and in terms of law enforcement, what we're proposing is that police officers have to go and get a warrant when they invade our privacy. And that's just the default standard that's been in place for a long time. What it means is that they have to go in front of a judge and justify why they want to take that action. So they have, if they want to put a GPS device on your car and follow you around, they have to go to a judge first and say why they're doing it and have a reason for it. Um, so what, what I'm proposing is not very radical. It's just that we put some obstacle um, to law enforcement getting our information and invading our privacy. Um, and I think this is a great time to talk about it. Uh, it's a great time to discuss what the solutions are um, before technology really undermines our privacy. <laughs>